Check this one. Yeah, this is okay. All right. I think I like this one better. Hello. Hi. Hi, Todd. Hi, I like this one better. Hi, I can't get very well out of this one. But this one I can. Okay, I like this one. So, um, we made it. I didn't. I didn't pack warmly for this convention uh, because we never leave the hotel. So it's like, why should I pack warmly for it? Um, can you guys hear me okay in the back? All groovy? Okay. Very cool. Hello. Come on in. Hi. Hello. What, why, are you, why am I playing music? Oh, your thing just said. Your phone? No, it's my phone. Oh, yeah. That's my phone. <laughs> I, uh, thank you guys uh, very much for being here. I know there's a lot going on, and you are here to witness the fact that my gum has run out of flavor. You can always just lean off the side when you're taping, though, no. and then look on the screen. Right. Okay. Um, and it's supposed to be the kind that lasts a long time. Uh, I have a little book that I want to read excerpts from. Just uh, I haven't read it yet. I, I, in addition to voicing for video games and cartoons, I also do audiobooks. And um, one of the books I have here I haven't uh, seen yet, but... Um, I got it, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll discover it. Let's see. Uh, trying to look at the median age of people in here. <laughs> and we have some parents, yes. We've got some moms and dads. All right, this book will be particularly helpful for you. <laughs> Let's see. Now, now, parents, there might be just a, a little bit of naughty language. <laughs> just like a word or two, is that okay? Mom, is that all right? No? Okay. You, you don't like the word, the D word? Like D-A-M-N, that's a bad word. You don't like that word. Okay, I will skip over that word. Even though it's in cartoons. And I didn't create the word. I'll skip over it. This book is entitled S-H something T-T-Y Mom. <laughs> The Parenting Guide for the Rest of Us. <laughs> let's see. Um, there's a chapter. Let's see. Introduction. There's section one entitled, Your Children Want to Ruin You. <laughs> section two, but sometimes they are awesome. Section three is, Stop Not Taking the Easy Way Out. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's pick a chapter here. Um... Road trip with your kids. How many people have traveled from afar to come to this convention? Afar. Okay, so let's look at that. Let's look at chapter one. Road trip with your kids. Multiply how bad you think it will be by a thousand, <laughs> then add ten million. <laughs> let's see. Um, oh, that's a good quick. Okay, here we go. First, let's figure out how this happened. What series of bad decisions led to this terrible morning where you are packing the minivan with juice boxes, sliced apples, cheese sandwiches, edible goldfish, small coolers, chapter books, crayons, and portable DVD players? How could it be that hours from now, a smart cookie such as yourself will be changing your baby's diapers in a truck stop bathroom usually reserved for... Oh, I can't say that part. <laughs> did, you, did you fail to consult Google Maps before you agreed to go to the in-laws for the holidays or Disney World as a family? If you live in Ohio, <coughs> did you forget that in order to get to Florida, you have to drive through Kentucky, Tennessee, and Georgia? <laughs> Here are a few things to try. Cancel. <laughs> And not just this Thanksgiving, but every Thanksgiving. <laughs> Until your youngest is at least six. Skype. Hire the Geek Squad to set up Skype on your mother-in-law's computer. It will cost less than what you'll spend on gas. Check airfares. It's possible to get reasonable last-minute airfares if you're not traveling on a holiday. While flying with kids is its own kind of H-E double hockey sticks. <laughs> it is at least a shorter one. Let's see what this page shows. If you are already driving, save time and go number one on the side of the road. <laughs> if you have more than one kid, you can't pull into a gas station every time a juice box is digested. Pit stops can add as much as an hour to the trip when you factor in the tantrums that come from saying no to Mini Mart candy. 
Find a nice ditch off to the side of a wide shoulder and teach your little one to squat. Or, I can't say that part. <laughs> Being able to go number one outdoors is an essential skill that every American ought to have. It's how many of us will do number one in the future as our nation slides further into debt. <laughs> Soon bathrooms will become like... Uh, hold on. I can't say that part. If you're already driving, Another tip, give up and turn around. <laughs> this is a golden opportunity to let the kids know that mom doesn't take... I can't say that part. <laughs> because let's face it, somewhere along the way you've lost their respect. You've threatened to leave a movie theater when they've acted like brats, but they stayed because it was a... But then you stayed because it was less a hassle. Over the years you've become exhausted and predictable. They know how to play you! Your bite is toothless, mom. Well, today the joke's on them because you didn't want to go to Disney, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Hanukkah, Flags Land anyway. <laughs> this time when you yell, I swear if you hit your sister one more time, I'm turning this car around, you will actually turn that car around. <laughs> they will be shocked at your cold-heartedness. <laughs> they will scream and cry, but you will not cave because this time it's easy to follow through and then they will fear you. <laughs> what do you think, Mom? What do you think? What's going through your head right now? I don't know. <laughs> if you're already driving, make them suck it out. Our kids are unskilled in the dark arts of entertaining themselves during a road trip. They sit comfortably in special seats with their sippy cups lodged in convenient cup holders. DVD players unfold from the minivan ceiling, and they are entertained like child emperors in the last days of Rome. If you can handle the whining, turn the radio to your favorite station and teach them how to be alone with their thoughts by providing no distractions at all. What do you think, Mom? Good tips? Yeah, Mom's a dream! Mom likes these tips. I like it. Other things your kid will try to clean with the gas station squeegee. Oh, the little ones. They love to help out at the gas station, hold the gas pump, then wash the car with a squeegee that's been sitting in gray water for two days. <laughs> After your daughter polishes your car, she will only want more. Depending on how attentive you are, she'll hit one or all of these targets. The ground, other cars, <laughs> your shoes, your car's recently conditioned leather interior. Oh, she's in the car now. The GPS the backup handwritten directions to Disney World, her baby sister's hair, all the orange slices, all of them. These are good tips. Yeah, you think so? One time, so my son, we'll revisit this. My, uh, my, my son is uh, 10 years old. A little, boy, a little clone. And, uh, and one time we were, we were on a trip, and we weren't, we weren't going on a road trip, but we were, we were just, uh, we were driving a, a place that was like 45 minutes away. And uh, we were, it was a little, little guy. He wasn't, this wasn't like last week. He was like a little, little, little guy. I think he was, he must have been like two, maybe one and a half or two. And so we're driving, and all of a sudden I look in the rear view mirror, and he's got this look on his face. He's just like. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, and he's in his car seat, and all of a sudden he just goes. <laughs> I'm by myself. Like, I'm just driving and I'm like... Ah. And you, you, from the outside, you see the car going... <laughs> and so, uh, he... And so, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm trying to like... I'm, I'm wiping and I... But I don't have any napkins. So just, uh, I'm using my organic napkin called my head. <laughs> but it's still there on his chest and so he's like smelling it and so then he's just like... I don't have any change of clothes. We're just getting to our destination. This book could have helped. We should have turned around. But I'm a man. And men, we don't do that. I'm not saying we're, we're not smart. We just don't do that. We don't turn around because there's some, there's some pride that... that upgrade that we earn if we don't turn around or if we don't ask for directions. Like when I'm driving, uh, sometimes I'll hear it in the car. They're like, just stop here and ask. I go, no, I don't need directions. Even though we've been driving the wrong way for 30 minutes, I will find my way. 
But then you get to that place, when you get to that enlightened place, gentlemen that are looking for your future wives or girlfriends or anything like that, you get to this enlightened place where it's not about winning every single battle. You just, it's kind of like playing, it's kind of like playing Animal Crossing. <laughs> Do you need to capture every fish? No. You don't have to. You don't need the gold version of everything. Just get the things, and then if you get a couple of gold ones along the way, that's okay. That's life, gentlemen. Men, you, you, you just, you get a couple of gold victories along the way. When the lady says, get directions, just do it. Just do it. I learned that lesson the hard way. I didn't do it for a long time. So, oh, we'll revisit that in a minute. Anyway, so, but I don't get to go on a lot of road trips. I, I do a lot of flying. I typically fly about 100,000 miles a year. Um, I, I don't even notice when the plane takes off. You know, like, sometimes people have never been on an airplane. Uh, yeah, so, okay, so I mean, I, I'm on a plane, like, once or twice a week. And so, you know, when the plane takes off, I mean, people have been, like, one time. Yeah, when the plane takes off, you're like looking off the side, it's so exciting because it's like this huge, giant, mechanical beast that, that, like, I can't fly. I can't jump in the air and fly, but this two, you know, seven ton piece of machinery can fly. That's weird. That can fly, but I can't fly. Like, you know, I'm just this 300 pound, like, dude, and I can't jump up and fly. And so, uh, I used to look out the window and be like, oh my god, here we go, Ooh, we're up in the air, we're 35,000 feet in the air, we're traveling like 600 miles an hour. Now I'm like, I'm asleep. <laughs> I just sleep. And uh, I, I actually did this yesterday. So when I'm flying, if, if, there's, if someone's sitting next to me and they look friendly, sometimes you can, you can kind of gauge it. You can sit next to them and you can kind of gauge if they're going to be friendly or not. And so this person was friendly, and so I always apologize. I always, I go... I'm like, ma'am, I don't know you. But I have to tell you, I am going to fall asleep. And it's not going to be pretty. It's going to be gross. It's going to scare you a little bit. It's going to be like watching a Miley Cyrus concert. Because what it looks like, I don't want to scare you with the horror of what it looks like from the front. But from behind, this is what it looks like. So that's what it looks like when I sleep on a plane. I cannot help it. Uh, I, it depends. If I, if I haven't had a whole lot of sleep, I'll kick in the snore motor to really get, but I, I don't really snore. I don't snore on planes. Uh, I, it, yeah, I don't really snore, actually. I don't really snore. Uh, I like to sleep very silently like a corpse. Uh, actually, I like to lay there with my arms across my chest. I like, like a wee baby. Uh, and so uh, I do that and, and uh, actually do sleep very silently. And what I used to do, my mom, so my mother is, is uh, very Asian. Uh, we're, we're an immigrant family from, uh, you know, she came from Vietnam. And so, you know, a lot of times, you, you, you know, parents, I don't know, like, how do you wake your kids up when, when, you, when it's time to wake them up in the morning when they were younger? How did you wake your kids up? You just shove them. Yeah. It doesn't matter how high the bed is up, they're going to shove them. But if they fall off, they should have woken up. <laughs> what about you? How do you wake up the kids? This one, she wakes up really early. I, she wakes up on her Before you. But the other two, my other two, yeah. you know, I even bought my son the loudest lo 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 alarm clock. Yeah. Still didn't work. That, that, you need to go to the doctor. That <laughs> Yeah, we even tried that. Ear. Really? He was right. Now, does she wake up before you and like you 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 feel someone staring at you? And you wake up, she's like right there looking. <laughs> hey, watch that, scaring mama. <laughs> so, so how do you get the other two up? I mean, what's the what's the what's the deal? Just gotta keep going in there and keep, get up. Or send me up. Send you, you wake them up. Yes. Okay. All right. Good to know. Jedi night. Okay. <laughs> well, what I do is when I fall asleep. When I, when, when I was a kid, my mom would come in and she would, uh, you know, sometimes it's very gentle. You're like, hey, baby, time to get up. <laughs> okay. And then you, you go off. 
And you come back and like, hey, time to wait. That's what I do with my son. I'm like, hey, son, time to get up, buddy. Uh, like, uh, like good cop in, in, the, in the Lego movie. Oh, hello, son. Oh, would you like some other? Too bad. <laughs> oh, hello. Hi, Dad. And so, uh, and so what she did, she doesn't do that. She's the complete opposite. She is the Vader of waking people. So she takes all the covers, she rips them off the bed. Uh, and so then that doesn't work. So then she comes up to my face and she she takes some some little like toothpick or something and she like flutters my eyelashes <laughs> to where they get very itchy. If that doesn't work. She like takes my head, she pushes on my head. And, uh, eventually I'll get up. But then but then it got to the point where I'm, I got bigger than my mom because my mom's four foot ten. Uh, and, and, and so then what she would do is, I would get to the point where I'd wake up before uh, I would be awake. And so what I'd do is i pull the covers over my head. And so then when, so then I'm sleeping, and then when my mom pulls the covers off, she just sees this. <laughs> and I scare her a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, but no, man, I love sleep. How many people go to bed at a decent time? Like, you know, you're in bed by 10.30. You're in bed at nine? What time do you wake up? <laughs> Forty because you get to go to work. Do you think work? Okay. Forty minute drive right on. Uh, okay. So so when I when I, I go to sleep at like I mean, at ten thirty, I try, I want to stay up. You know, isn't it crazy how when you're a kid you're like, I'm not sleepy. I like you're fighting sleep all day. No, I don't want to go to bed. <laughs> and then when you get into college, you're like, please let me sleep. <laughs> Oh my god, yes. I, so many times I fell asleep on my textbook and then I wake up and it's like... <laughs> oh, I guess I'm not going to do those math problems. They're on my face. <laughs> I love sleep. I go to bed like 10.30 and then I, I wake up like it. What's sad is I wake up before my alarm. My alarm is like, okay, get ready to wake him up. Ha! He's already awake. <laughs> And, uh, because I get up and I try to go to the gym. I try to be there first thing in the morning because, like, you know, you wait. You know, you know that time in the gym in the evening when everyone's, everyone's like coming and then you can't get on a machine, but then you get on a machine and then you go try to go to this machine and when you try to come back, there's a dude sitting on there who's clearly going to be there for a while because he's just resting. He's not sweating at all, but he's working out. Uh, that's what's going on. Uh, and so I like to go to bed and I, I, love, uh, I don't do a whole lot of napping. I don't do the I don't do the siesta midday, even though it's good. I like it, but like I just can't like because when I go down, I can't do like a 15 minute. I used to sleep in, when I was in college. I would sleep in my car because uh, I didn't want to go back to my apartment because I'm like, well, because I'd get back from the set or like playing a concert or something. By the time I get back, it's like three or four in the morning, and I'm like, well, I might as well just sleep here because I've got class in like two hours. So instead of going back and unloading the gear and taking a shower and blah blah blah, I'm just like. I just pop the seat back, go to sleep, wake up, go eat, go to class, go to my first class. And because uh, sometimes I would, I, my schedule, I would take 18 semester hours, and uh, and then I would go to rehearsal, or, or do a performance. Then I would go to the film set and film a movie all night. And, I mean, I mean, I was super, like I wasn't eating at all. I was super thin. I was like scarecrow. I was like a little, I was like like skinny, skinny little string bean man. And uh, like Jack, what's this? What's this? Who sleep is over there? <laughs> and so I was very, very small. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I love sleep, and uh, and I fly all over the place, and I and I, I record uh, for the parents that, that don't know who I am, and you thought that uh, you were here for some sort of uh, I don't know, a Vitamix demonstration or, or, or a cooking demonstration. That's not what this is. Uh, I'm a I'm a voice actor, not camera actor for. Uh, uh, let's see some shows like uh, Fairy oh, Tale, Black Butler, Italia. Oh, Italia. 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 Our episodes four and five. If, if you come to the panel tomorrow, I'm going to talk more about that and show you some stuff. If you're a fan of the original series, parents, we we uh, continue Star Trek continues. We continue that original mission. So I'll talk more about that and talk about how we have uh, 
one of our one of our guest stars for the next episode is actually a, a previous Doctor Who doctor. Previous doctor. Uh, Colin Baker. So he's gonna be there. But uh, but yeah, so it's pretty cool. So come tomorrow, I'll show you some stuff. I'll show you some of the uh, some some little bit of clips from the episodes and things like that. But uh, but yeah, we get to we get to do all sorts of fun stuff. Um, some of the things that I that I really like uh, voicing some of my favorite video games to voice is like World of Warcraft was a lot of fun and, and uh, Call of Duty was was fun and uh, Street Fighter Four uh, was a blast and um, I I think one of the cartoons that I voiced Legend of Korra just just had a what do you guys think is it okay. Yeah, pretty cool. Batar Jr. is who I was in that, and uh, I got to be... I, you know, the whole time, what's funny about that is, so Zelda Williams is a voice in that, and the whole time, I was just like, oh, Zelda, that's a cool name. I had no idea she was Robin Williams' daughter. And so we're just talking, and I'm like, uh, so I go, did your dad name you Zelda because you... And I didn't know it was, I didn't know it was Robin Williams. I was like, did your dad name you Zelda because he... Like like Zelda actually, and she goes, yeah, we're big we're big Zelda fans. I'm like, oh okay, and it just didn't connect it because Robin Williams was a huge Zelda fan, and I'm just like, oh that's really cool. Your dad your dad must be cool. And she's like, yeah, he's pretty cool. <laughs> and, like, oh, okay. and there and there's actually there's another girl in the cast who uh, is a, uh, she was in all the um, so you think or, or uh, what are those dance movies? Just the the, the I step up. Musical. She was in all those movies, <laughs> and she and she was very careful not to. I guess she gets encountered by dudes that are always like trying to uh, make her one of these moms one day, but uh, <laughs> by making her a mother. But um, I was just being nice, and I was just asking her about what she does and stuff. And she was she was like, oh, I just got back from New York, and I go, oh, well, what were you doing there? Because I knew nothing about it. She's like, oh, I was just doing a, a dance thing. I go, oh, okay, so you're a dancer, very cool. And then what I slowly started to realize is that everyone around me, we all do stuff. And like they would ask me, they go, um, cause I, I get that way too. I don't, cause I'll, I can tell when someone's coming up to me and they're asking for something. Like they, it, it inevitably happens. Like they'll talk to me and then all of a sudden they'll be like, so how can I get into, and I'm like, why? <laughs> you just ruined it. <laughs> Because basically what they're saying is like, wow, you do voiceover, that's a great gig. How can I take your job? <laughs> like, that's essentially what they're saying. And so I, 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 uh, I'm like, well, take this plastic bag that says not for children, put it over your head, breathe in. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, but, but I was starting to see all these, all, all these, it, it was fun to record and just see these people in movies. I'm like, wait a minute, I was just recording with them, but it was pretty fun. But uh, so, so I get to, it's, it's a fun life in LA. It's, it's, um, it's, I, I've been in the industry for a very long time, and, and actually, uh, this is good because the parents are here because um, even though my mom wasn't supportive of me going into the industry, uh, she, it's not that she wasn't supportive, it's that she would have rather me be a doctor or a lawyer or a dentist. Because some of my family is very traditional. Like my, my great uncle like, uh, had arranged marriages set up for his kids. And like they were, they had to become dentists, and they had a dentistry, and they, and the parents worked the front desk to screen women that were possible suitors for them, and so they, they, they did that. They had to do it. Like they demanded. So at least my mom didn't do that. But uh, but I was about to go to LA when I was 18. How many people are, are about to go to college or thinking about college? You're just right on the cut. You're thinking about it. You don't know what you want to do. Maybe maybe not. You don't know. Right? What are you thinking about? It? I see some hesitation. Um, I had that hesitation. In fact, I wasn't going to go. In fact, I told my mom, I go, I'm going to LA. I've been doing acting for a long time, ready to rock. She goes, okay, if you walk out that door, if you go to LA, you're on your own. Done. You're on your own. That's it. She goes, but if you go to college, I will pay for your college wherever you go, and you will have an education, you will have a head start. Even still, I was like, it's that thing about not asking directions. I'm a man. <laughs> Thank God I took her up on it. I applied to all these universities. I got into SMU, which is uh, like I think the number three or the number four theater university in the nation. Uh, they stay, they audition 10,000 kids a year and they take uh, uh, 21. 
And so um, I got into that, and I went to that program, and I'm so glad I went to college. So those of you that are on the feds, I'm not saying college is for everybody, but I will say that the college diploma is becoming the new high school diploma. And you will have experiences in college that you're not allowed to have outside of college, in the sense that if you make a mistake in the real world, that's it. That, that you don't get another shot, typically. That's you make that mistake, they're not gonna call you again. You can make those mistakes in college. You can mess up in a, in a show. You can mess up in, in class and, and you learn from it and then they want you to mess up so you can learn from that. Um, and, and, and it was, uh, that's, that's an invaluable gift that my, that my parents gave me because I thought I knew everything when I was in college. And then, then what you realize is that you don't know everything. In fact, you know very little. Because uh, I thought I knew more than my professors that were that were company members at the Royal Shakespeare Company and that were these, these amazing people. I was like, oh, I know more than them, I'm 18. And so uh, <laughs> a professor called me into the office one day and almost kicked me out of college because I was, I was such a little fatherless child. <laughs> and so I had to get my act together. But, uh, but I'm so grateful for it because years, years later, when I moved to LA, years later, just because I went to SMU, and I met other people in LA that were at SMU, they helped me out. They let me either crash on their couch, or they pointed me in the right direction for a casting director or a studio to work with. And so it was, it was an invaluable experience for me. And also you do, a lot of the friends, I, I, have, I have one friend from high school that I'm still friends with. In college, I've got like five or six. Like you, that's where you form, I feel like, in college is where you really form those bonds that are gonna endure for the rest of your life. Like I'm seeing on Facebook, my friends are all having kids, they're all getting married. You know, it's crazy. I'm sitting here doing, you know, uh, handstands on chairs. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> it's out of control. And so, uh, but, uh, but no, it's a lot of fun. So I would, I, and, and, and the reason I say this is because I will always get a question of how did you get into voice acting? Is there a school you can go to for it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I can't sit here and tell you <clears throat> what to do because I don't know you. That's like saying, that's like going to the doctor and saying, doctor, fix me! <laughs> and the doctor's like, uh, what's wrong with you? The doctor doesn't know any of your symptoms, doesn't know any of your background or your history or anything like that, so I can't give you advice because if I give you advice and that is not based on any kind of knowledge that I have about you and you go try that, that advice I gave you, you go, well, Todd Habercorn told me that I would, and then you wind up you know, working at an In-N-Out Burger for the rest of your life. <laughs> don't get mad at me. I don't know you. And so um, I, 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 I resist giving specific knowledge like that. What I will say is that education has helped me greatly and that I wish I had taken more advantage of it when I was in school, especially when I was in high school because there it's free. <laughs> the knowledge is free and teachers want to help you when you get to college. My college was like over $150,000. I mean, absolutely nuts. And you're paying for every minute that you're there. And I still didn't take advantage of all the education there. So it's like, do it people, you gotta do it. I will say like, go do that education. And, and I know that sounds uh, lame to some of you, but also colleges have the best parties. <laughs> Come on. Let's, I, had a, I had a PA system for my parties, and like I had like a whole sound system, and I would broadcast out over the courtyard, and, and it was awesome. People came to our parties, and it wasn't a party until security came and shut it down. And, uh, but, but don't go because of that. Namely because I won't be throwing those parties anymore. But, uh, but yeah, go because that's where you can, you can find yourself, and, you, and like I said, making mistakes. You learn so much from making mistakes. Nobody wants to make mistakes, but that's when you learn the most. That's where it's awesome, you know? It's like when you're watching a movie, if the good guy wins every time, that's why I go watching Ninja, Tur Ninja Turtles. They win every single episode. It's boring! When there's some conflict, that's where it gets interesting. So, like at the end of, uh, I mean, Star Trek II, Wrath of Khan, when they killed Spock, that's a huge conflict. They're like, oh my God, I can't wait till the next one. And then, boom, part three comes out, you're there opening day. Now, J.J. Abrams' Star Trek, this last one, when they killed, killed Kirk for 10 minutes, he, they actually could not keep him dead for 15 minutes. It, I, I timed it. 15 minutes he was dead and they had to bring him back to life because they don't have any cojones uh, to leave him dead. But anyway, speaking of which,